Um, so I guess I need to talk about antiparticles. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I want to um, kind of introduce and finish talking about antiparticles in five minutes. <laughs> and uh, what's the quickest way to do it? How many people here have heard of the phrase positron? Maybe. Positronic brain, science fiction, never mind. Um, so positron is an antiparticle of electron. It was the first uh, antiparticle to be discovered. Um, let me show you the experimental basis, how positron was originally discovered in the first place. So um, discovery of positron. Uh, there's an iconic image for discovery of positron. So um, I guess this is probably good. It's from Wikipedia. So this is an iconic image. Wait, where's my iconic image? This is the iconic image for the discovery of positron. You might look at it, what are we talking about? This is, um, so let me try to kind of describe what's going on here. Um, so one thing, one feature I want you to pay attention to is this curved path. You see the curved path, right? Yeah. So it's uh, the curved path, it's sub, it's, uh, it, it is the measurement of trajectory of a particle. This is a measurement taken in a, something, a device called a bubble chamber or cloud chamber that I was hoping we would get to at some point today. Maybe it might be next week. Um, it's a device used to visualize paths of particles. It actually literally visualized. So now it looks curved. Why do you think it's curved? There's a magnetic field. They put it, put this chamber inside the magnetic field for the explicit purpose of trying to measure the charge of the particle. Because what you saw with alpha, beta, and gamma rays was that that was one way of discovering charge of the particle, right? So it's in a magnetic field. And based on the picture, the way the magnetic field is supposed to be set up, I think the magnetic field was set up so that you had a magnetic field that was going into the board. All right. So suppose that you have a particle that bends this way. You just have, you have this trajectory of a particle that bends this way. Now, let's say, let's suppose I told you that this particle is electron. Then, uh, then, then let me ask you this question. What direction is this electron traveling in? Down. Downward, right? Because if we cross B, that way it goes to the right, but the electron is negatively charged, so the force actually points to the left, so that would be consistent with this leftward curve. So if this was an electron, then it would be moving downward. So, okay, so far no discovery. So, that's the reason for the placement of this plate here. The purpose of this plate here is to slow down the particle. By slowing down the particle, you can infer what direction the particle was moving. So instead of you know, starting out with the what is the particle and then determining its direction of motion, you can look at, well, what direction was it going? And from that, and knowing the magnetic field you set up, infer the charge of the particle. So let me erase all these notations and just have you look at this trajectory with that background information in mind. What's the charge of, what, okay, what direction is the particle moving? So how do you know it's moving up? Yeah, the curve, it curves more quickly here, right? And if you do the calculation, what that corresponds to is that this has less momentum. It's moving slower, that when you go through the calculation, it results in a smaller radius of curvature. So the particle is moving slower than here, which means for that to happen, the particle must have went through the plate this direction, and in the process, it lost some kinetic energy, slowed it down. So knowing that direction of velocity, 
what's the charge of the particle? Positive. So this is the discovery of positron. That's how they discovered the positron. Now, you know, so I'm kind of starting the story from the middle. Which is, so obviously this is an apparatus set up explicitly to look for positron, right? Then the question, why were they expecting this new particle positron an antiparticle of electron? And um, I guess I don't really have time to give you the full story. So I will just uh, tell you that the, um, so the, this, so this is the kind of quick version of it. These antiparticles, they were predicted, um, predicted by Dirac. That's the name of the scientist, or P A M Dirac. I think a P stands for Paul. I'm not sure. Well, P A M Dirac. He's the uh, he he um, is credited with coming up with something called the Dirac equation. It's the relativistic quantum mechanical equation that applies for spin-off particles. And one of the prediction of uh, a Dirac equation is that you need to have a negative energy state. And the way linear algebra works out for relativistic quantum mechanics is you cannot simply say the negative energy states are unphysical. That's not allowed for you. Um, that's kind of for the complete spanning of the space of the solutions. You need to allow negative solutions. So what Dirac um, suggested was that the universe is filled with what's called uh, Dirac, oops, what we now call Dirac C of um, electron states. So there's some up to some particular level of energy levels that's filled up with the fermions already. Then due to exclusion principle, those um, negative states that are allowed in the solution, but the actual negative energy particles cannot exist because it's all already filled up. And then the existing electrons with the positive energy are the states above this uh, Dirac ground level. And what it contemplated was excitation of one of those negative energy states into positive energy. Then what you would have is, so okay, I have this Dirac-C that's all filled up. So when you excite one of these filled up states into positive energy state, this is what you would have. You would have a real electron that we are already familiar with, and you would have this hole that's left by um, the state that was uh, excited up to here. This could happen by a photon being absorbed, for example. And what this hole would get referred to is the positron. And it actually, because it's the absence of a negative energy state, it actually does have positive energy. And so that's where the prediction of the antiparticle comes from. And so it was predicted. People were not looking for it. They found it. Antiparticles exist. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess the easiest way to think of as antiparticles, it's the same as the particle, except that it's, uh, it has opposite charge. And certain quantum numbers it has, like uh, lepton numbers, are also negative. So that's where it's a this neutrino is, uh, instead of being a neutrino, it's an antineutrino. Um, so that's where that comes from. 